The chip away strategy that I talk about in the book is the new blueprint. We're here with Eric Stackelback, who is an investigative reporter and author of the brand new book, The Terrorist Next Door, How the Government is Deceiving You About the Islamist Threat. Thanks for joining us here at Human Events. Jason, great to be here. Yeah. All right, first question. Now, you argue in the book that Islamic <clears throat> terrorists have changed their tactics and are now planning smaller scale attacks that effectively chip away at the psyche of the nation. What do you mean by that? Jason, I call this the chip away strategy. Now, what that means is Al Qaeda has shifted. This has been a conscious decision by Al Qaeda's hierarchy to shift to smaller scale attacks. Think of Fort Hood. Think of the Times Square bomber. Think of the underwear bomber. Most importantly, think of the Mumbai bombings of 2008. Al Qaeda has gone from wanting to top 9-11. Don't get me wrong, they still want to top 9-11. They still want that monumental, legendary, history-altering attack. They still want to pull that off. But it's been very difficult over the past 10 years. Combination of great law enforcement and intelligence work, a little bit of luck, and a lack of funds. Al-Qaeda's funding sources in many cases have dried up. So that has made them, that has compelled them, it's forced them to shift their tactics to smaller scale attacks. Mumbai is the blueprint now. Fort Hood is the blueprint now. Cheap, easy to carry out, doesn't take a great deal of planning, doesn't even take an overseas connection. It doesn't take a brain surgeon to walk into a shopping mall, shopping mall yell Allahu Akbar and start firing. Nidal Hassan at Fort Hood killed 13 American troops, dominated headlines for weeks and weeks, really damaged, I think, the psyche of the American people. I call it the chip away strategy, Jason, because it will chip away. If you have a sustained period where you have one after the other, a Mumbai-style attack in a mid-sized American city, Fort Hood-style attacks, uh, something like the Times Square bomber last year, if you have a sustained period, maybe a shopping mall, maybe a bus, something like Israel sees on a daily basis, if you transfer that to American soil, you chip away at us economically, and psychologically. It doesn't have the history altering qualities of a 9-11, which by the way, every day Al Qaeda and their co cohorts are still planning. But in the meantime, while Al Qaeda bides its time, while it plans, while it plots, while it gets its ducks in a row to pull off the next 9-11 style attack, this chip away strategy that I talk about in the book is a very, very effective strategy for Al Qaeda. And Jason, it's interesting because right after 9-11, how do you top 9-11? How do you top the greatest terrorist attack in world history? How do you top that? So Al-Qaeda after 9-11 said we can't settle for anything less on American soil. The next attack has to involve airplanes once again, maybe WMDs, maybe a dirty bomb. It has to be masses, massive, has to change history like 9-11 did. But they soon learned, by about 2003, 2004, they learned that that wasn't going to be easy to do. So over the past few years, where at first they poo-pooed this whole chip away strategy, there was actually a plot in 2003, Jason, to release cyanide gas on the New York City subway system. Ayman al-Zawahiri, al-Qaeda's number two, actually ixnayed that attack, said, nope, not big enough. That's good for London. It's good for Madrid. But we set the bar so high in America, it has to be bigger. I can tell you, in 2011, Al-Qaeda would not have vetoed that attack. They would have carried it out. The chip away strategy that I talk about in the book is the new blueprint. Look for smaller scale attacks carried out by lone wolves, guys who might not even be connected to Al-Qaeda. An 18-year-old Pakistani American who's disgruntled, finds jihad, finds Al-Qaeda on the web, the internet goes out to act out on his own. These attacks now have Al-Qaeda's blessing and they have called for in their audio and video tapes these kind of attacks to increase. But Al-Qaeda then as an organization, are they encouraging these type of chip away attacks? So they're yeah. telling themselves, we want you to plan these smaller scale right. attacks in order to get in the minds of Americans. Uh, Jason, they are, absolutely. In the beginning, as I said, they weren't. They said, look, we don't want amateur hour. We don't want amateurs acting in our name. And we don't th want these attacks to be failures, to, to not be carried off right. We have a reputation to uphold. And again, I can't stress enough, Al-Qaeda is all about imagery and making history. 
and media attention and making a splash. They want to top 9-11. They set the bars so high that day. So all of this at first made them apprehensive about endorsing these smaller scale attacks, especially from guys who aren't directly connected to Al-Qaeda, guys they don't even know. But as the years have gone on, as Al-Qaeda has not had, thank God, on American soil, a lot of success in carrying out follow-up attacks, they've said, you know what? They observed the underwear bomber, Jason. They observed Fort Hood. They observed the, re and the Times Square bomber last May. They observed, most importantly, the U.S. government, the Obama administration's reaction, pathetic reaction to each of these attempted attacks, and in the case of the Fort Hood, a successful attack, the jihadists sat back and they observed the U.S. government's reaction, the finger pointing, the blame game, the lack of acknowledgement that, yes, these are not just isolated extremists, as Napolitano, Holder, and Obama tell us repeatedly, these guys are part of a global jihad movement. It was a pitiful, disgraceful, quite frankly, reaction by the Obama administration in each case, as I outline in great detail in the book. Al-Qaeda saw this and they said, you know what? Even if these attacks aren't successful, even if these smaller scale attacks are not a success, they are still a success in another sense, in that they cause complete embarrassment for the U.S. government. It shows the weakness of the U.S. government to the jihadist, and it creates economic, psychological damage. So you know what? Let's run with it.